Hello everyone, I am Erica of biddingschool.com and you are watching No One Has To Bid Alone, my weekly open workshop to make sure that every bidder around the world has company. Today we are going to work on a cute little motif, the lotus, designed by my friend and colleague Zuzi. I'm sure that you know her from the Weeding School Club. She makes lots of wonderful things for us, puts together articles, designs tutorials, is there to have fun and answers questions when we want to know more about something. So today it's a Zuzi design and I see Kara and Kirsten and Eleanor, Kata, Sarah, then I see a Facebook user friend. Jessica is here. Marianne, Antoinette is here. Lovely. I'm really happy to spend this evening with you, ladies. Thank you for joining me and joining everyone to keep each other company. So, Zuzi created the Lotus Motif uh, from the jewels of the Maharaja uh, Beating School Academy team box. So, if you have the box, then everything is prepared for you in it. And then, if you want, you can use some of the components to hang, hang them at the bottom of your motif if you want something to hang from it or you can go for anything from your stash. Also, Cindy joined us. Nancy, Nancy says, Zuzi, it's beautiful. I've already started it. <laughs> Brit Marie, Faye, Honey, Sandra, Gunnel, Corinne, Deb. And if you haven't heard your name, then it's because I see you as a Facebook user. And if you want me to see your name and face, then please click on the link on top of the video to enable my broadcasting program to see your name and see your face. And then I can greet you. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Michelle. So, oh, Kata, Kata says, Ladies, thank you again for all your kind comments. Haven't read everything yet, but we'll do so and answer soon. So you might know that at the Bidding School blog, biddingschool.com slash blog slash, we have a series of interviews where we introduce and get to know more about sometimes uh, beadwork designers, sometimes uh, fellow beaders from the Bidding School club. And this week, Kata answered our questions. And it was really wonderful to read everything, what she told about her art and her life and her creative processes and everything. So, yeah, and there were lots of lovely comments. So if you haven't read it yet, then please go to the blog. There are also other interesting things. But uh, yeah, the latest article is the interview with Kata and it's super nice. And hi, Elena and Aggie, Manuela, Janine, Sherry, and Ta uh, Marta and Teresa, Joyce, Susan, Faye. Faye says it's a great article indeed, Alison. So let's see what do we need for today's little lotus motif. We will need some gem dual beads for pieces for one motif. Then we will need four millimeter fire polished check glass beads. We will need six millimeter Miyuki slender bugle beads. Then seed beads. I have used two different colors of round 15 Miyuki seed beads. You might see the little bronzish golden shine seed beads in between the inside holes of the gem duos. So that was my first color. And then my second color was this uh, magenta, which is one of my favorites recently. And then I used uh, Miyuki Delica size 11 seed beads. 
and then the rest is completely up to you. You can hang whatever you wish from the bottom of your earring or pendant, uh, because this would also make up for a cute pendant, or you can even join some motifs and make a bracelet. And yet, yeah, one more important information that we have a PDF file waiting for you at novanhastobeadalone.com. And then you can either download it for free or go for the support version and buy it for five euros. In any case, please, after the workshop or during the weekend, please head back to beadingschool.com and leave a review about the tutorial and tell please fellow beaders that how did you like beading it? It would uh, help a lot for other beaders to, to know that what do you think about this little motif. So thank you so much and let's start. In the meanwhile, Wendy, Christine, Anne, Mariella, Nicoline, Bonnie, Vania, and Michelle says she just received her first order with the sparkly snowflake box. That's a really good one, I think. Enjoy it a lot, Michelle. And Sharon is here. And Chris and Claire and Helena and Liv also. Wonderful. Let's start beating. I hope you have already prepared your colors. I'm using the, uh, the beads from the Jewel of the Maharaja box. And then uh, besides the beads from the Maharaja box, I added, I made mine into an earring and I added a bow tie ear stud with cubic zirconia as I think that the shape of the bow tie ear stud fits the shape of the uh, gem duos in this motif and the shape created from the bugles very well. And then for the hanging part, I added round 11 seed beads in the same color as my first round 15 seed beads. I used a three millimeter round bead from my Maharaja box. I used a three millimeter milky aquamarine fire polished bead. And then I added a uh, 15 millimeter Preciosa Nacre drop pearl at the bottom. And Zuzi is here. Zuzi, thank you so much for this cute design. I love it. And I can't wait to see everyone's different versions. So nice that you can join us today. Maria is here also. So let's get started. I'm using, as always, size 11 tulip beading needle and 0 0.12 millimeter 4LB black satin. <laughs> Fire line, sometimes it's not easy to know where, which way should I move my things so it moves closer to the center of the camera. <laughs> so... Let's get started. We will start with the gem duo beads. And we will need four pieces at the beginning. It's always nice to check both holes just quickly when you are beading with two hole beads, because it might happen that the second hole is clogged and that's a nasty surprise. So just take a quick look when you are picking up your gem duo beads or quickly push your needle through the second hole to, to be 100% sure that they are not clogged. So I am picking up four gem duo uh, beads, making sure that the bumpy side is facing the top and the flat side is facing the bottom of my motif. And then I bead through all of the beads one more time through the same hole. And then I bead through the very first bead through the same hole for a third time. So when I pull my thread, as always, I'm leaving a 10, 12 centimeter, five, six inch long 
tail. So I pulled my thread and then the beads, the gem duos should form this little cross shape. I recommend not to tie a knot or if you like tying a knot, then leave it a bit loose because in step two, we are going to add some around 15 seed beads in between the inside holes of the gem duos. So we need a little space where the beads will fit. And Daniela joined us in the meanwhile and Emmy is here and uh, Linda is here and Ludka is here. And Sarah says that the motive is uh, really cute. I agree. <laughs> so step two, any questions about step one? In the meanwhile, I will explain step two, but if you have questions, then just let me know. In step two, I will add round 15 seed beads one by one between the inside holes of the gem dual beads. So I'm basically repeating the thread path, but adding the round 15s between the gem duos. This is, as you can see, also perfect for leftovers because you use so little, so few beads for a motif that even four pieces of gem duos, for example, come handy and you can finish a little pendant. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And I'm still staying in this inside small circle and I will be beading through the inside holes of the gem dual beads and adding more beads attached to the round 15s. By the way, ladies, I'm really curious. Are you working with your Jewel of the Maharaja beads or have you chosen some different color combinations? They have all kinds of turquoise and pink and purplish and golden and even some silver and gray tones in the Jewel of the Maharaja box. And I think the result is super nice, but I'm 100% sure that it would look good in all kinds of different color combinations. So please tell me, what kind of colors are you using? In the meanwhile, I will show step three. So in step three, I bead through around 15 seed bead, and then I attach a Miyuki Delica with a square stitch to the round 15. It means that I picked up the Miyuki Delica and I bead through the same round 15 one more time. So the Delica will sit neatly on top of the round 15 and their holes will be parallel. So don't expect them to line up, but the holes will be parallel. And to strengthen the connection, repeat please this little square stitch. So beat one more time through the Delica and one more time through the round 15 and just to finish it off bead through the delica place for a third time too and that's how we will continue step four and let's see your colors i'm curious so chantal is here welcome chantal good to see you oh jenny is using the christmas box it also has lots of my favorite shapes so indeed you can make the same from the Christmas box too. There are those beautiful gem duos with the silver and gold splash colors. Marta is using turquoise bro. Five extra points for Marta for using turquoise. <laughs> Mary is using purple gem duos. Ula is using a completely different color combination, green and hot pink. And Eleanor 
she's making matching earrings to her very peri necklace. Please take a picture of, uh, of them together. I'm really curious and Eleanor, I would love to see it, how they fit. Kara's using the box for the first part and then let's see what will happen. Gunnar's using blue, green and lilac. That sounds nice. Someone is watching from the office during working hours. <laughs> Kirsten using light blue and purple. And Erica is listening. Vanya is using pink with a cold wash for gem duos. Then Oh, Chris is going for the box colors. <laughs> Linda is getting ready to step out with, from uh, out of her comfort zone and go with bold colors. You made me curious, Linda, and so nice to like experiment a little bit. Belinda's choosing colors. Hi, Belinda. <laughs> Corinne is taking it easy. Mojo will come back. Bidding Mojo will come back. Just, I think the best what we can do if it happens, it happens to all of us and it never feels good. So I'm sorry that you are going through this, but it will, it will come back. Just don't push it. Take it easy. Enjoy. <laughs> And Sherry is using turquoise, pink and silver. Nice. Natalie is using dark olive and copper. I think that's a really nice color combination. Cindy, gold splash, turquoise, gem duos. That's beautiful. Jessica, jet AV, gold, dark bronze and blue. Oh, Gunnar is using also turquoise. Holly was feeding all day. Oh, that's wonderful. Kata's using Maharaja box, Starry Night box, and her own beads. Kata, you made me curious that how can you fit so many things into such a small design? <laughs> Deb is using purples, pinks, and bright blue. Nancy's using the Maharaja colors. <laughs> and maybe a next one, which is going to be different. Oh, Daniela got inspired by Marta. And hi, Anna. Nice to, nice to have you here. So let's continue with step four. So in this step, we are starting out by exiting the new delica that we attached with a square stitch to the round 15. We pick up a 4 millimeter fire polished bead. Where is my 4 millimeter fire polished bead? It slipped off my needle. <laughs> and we pick up a Miyuki delica 11. And I let them drop. I bead back through the fire polished bead. So the delica that I picked up, it will sit on top of the fire polished bead. And now this powdery gray fire polished bead, it is nestling between two nice matte C opal Miyuki Delica 11s. So I think that's a really nice uh, group of beads together, the turquoise powdery gray and turquoise again. I'm, I beaded through the Delica that is attached with a square stitch. And then I bead through the round 15 in between the gem duos. So this is the full stitch, full sequence that I want to make. And I want to make it 
all around the motif. So to get in position for the next repetition, I beat through the inside hole of the gem duo, I beat through the round 15, and I'm going to repeat the same. So first, I picked up a Miyuki Delica, I bead through the round 15 again, so this is a square stitch, I repeat the square stitch, beading through the delica, beading through the round 15 to make the connection stronger. And then I bead through the delica in order to continue adding more beads. And now when I'm exiting the delica, I pick up the fire polished bead, I pick up another delica, I let the fire polished bead and the delica drop where they are supposed to go. <laughs> when attached, I bead back through my fire polished bead. And this time I like to a bit arrange the delica that is sitting on top of the fire polish to make sure that it's sitting nicely. And then I bead through the delica under the fire polished and the round 15 again. Do you have questions about this part? Adding the delica with square stitch and then adding the pico of fire polished bead and Miyuki delica? Let me know. How is it going? And Donna will beat through the weekend. Lutka is thinking about an orange gem duo with purple fire polished bead and called bugles. And hi, Martina. Corinna, bright apple green. Like the parrots, right? <laughs> So, if you don't have questions about this part, then let's move forward and let's attach the next delica and fire polished bead. By the way, this week we were arranging lots of lots of different things. How? We would like to make your beating school academy experience even richer and even uh, even more immersive into the little world that we are creating every two months for you. Not only with beads, but also with articles and other kind of programs. So I have shared already one of the big news with you. So on the 12th of February, it's a Saturday. Uh, normally it would be lunch break time, but that week instead of a lunch break, a regular lunch break, we will have something special happening. For me, when building a little word like India or the word of the magic garden, it's very important to include written or spoken word too. I, I think it's because I had a time in my life when I actually wanted to become a writer. It was, I think, 20 years ago, but, and that dream didn't happen. But literature and spoken word are still really important for me. I love reading and I also love listening to stories. So on the 12th of February, a professional storyteller, a real life bard, will join us for the first time. And maybe then also for the next themes. Let's see. So... Chenge, she actually, she's from Hungary. She lives at the moment in Hungary, but she studied storytelling in the United States. 
in America, and she actually had she has a PhD from storytelling. So she's really she's really a professional bard, a professional storyteller. And on the 12th of February, she will spend an hour with us and she will tell us stories about the lands of the land of the Maharajas and all of those stories will be some shiny stories focusing on gemstones and some treasures. So I'm really curious what kind of tales she will she will bring us. So this storytelling night it is going to be an extra uh, gift for every turquoise and fuchsia level fuchsia member of the beading school academy and i will add the zoom link it will happen through zoom and i will add the zoom link to the virtual classroom so you can access it and i hope that you like the idea and i can't wait <laughs> to hear Chang'e's Chang'e's tales. I was talking to her this week through Zoom and she told me that she actually is going through a personal challenge in, uh, uh, in the near future where she will collect stories about a specific team for a whole month. And uh, she actually chose gemstones so <laughs> she didn't even know about this little idea of mine for inviting her, but she kind of is already preparing for it. So that I find it really a really nice coincidence. <laughs> and I'm glad to see that Mary and Aggie and Anna like the idea and Veronica is here <laughs> also <laughs> Ludka is also looking forward so in the meanwhile I finished adding the fire polished beads and the delica beads all around the motif and in step six I started already step six, sorry, I didn't mention it, but <laughs> I kept reading and it happened sometime, somehow. <laughs> so I started step six by beading through a Delica, a fire polished bead, and a Delica sitting on top of a fire polished bead. So I needed to get here on the outer edge of the motif to get in position so I can add finally the Miyuki Slender Bugle beads, the six millimeter size. And we will bead all around the motif and we will insert a bugle bead always between the Miyuki Delica that is sitting on top of the fire polished, that is actually holding the fire polished, and between the outside hole of the gem duo. So if you haven't checked the second hole of your gem duo and it's accidentally clogged, then this is the step where you will discover it. <laughs> but hopefully everything will be all right. So this is how I go all around the motif. Linda is also looking forward to the storyteller. Oh, Sharon, unfortunately, has a class that date. I'm sorry that you that you can't join in, uh, in real time, Sharon. I will uh, make a recording, actually, about the storytelling night, because I think <laughs> this is something truly special and we might even want to listen to Chang'e's stories again when <laughs> beading maybe. So the recording will be available later so you will not miss it even if you can't listen to it in real time. 
and hopefully she will come back also another time later during the during the year. How is it going with your motives, ladies? Is everything okay? Please let me know. Please be careful for the bugle uh, with the bugle beads. There is, um, especially during the next step, there is going to be quite some tension on them. And I have to say that with my first motive, I was a bit impatient and I was going fast and I managed to break one of my bugle beads. So I had to, and I, I, I wasn't in the mood of unpicking it. So I have to confess that I added a bugle bead and it is a little bit like, you might see that it's not a hundred percent perfect, this part. And that's because I added the bugle bit later because I managed to crack it. So be, please be careful. Don't pull your thread like super strong. And actually, besides, besides this storytelling night, we are also preparing something extra for the next Beating School Academy team boxes. And... I can't share it yet, but I uh, wanted to say that I want to thank everyone who signed up and who was getting our boxes and who told about our, uh, about the Beading School Academy to her beading friends. So, uh, so they signed up because this made it possible that they can create this extra extra programs for you and i'm super happy that 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 we can do this together so <laughs> yeah but i will be evil now and i will not say that what what is coming but i promise that it is it is something that that you will love <laughs> But no more words. <laughs> Let's check how is it going with your lotus motives. Ola, uh, Ola says it's going well. Kata's looking forward to the storytelling event. Chris is here. Chris says, so happy to hear that the storytelling session will be recorded. That day is my grandson's third birthday party. He's a Valentine's Day baby. Oh, then it's a very important celebration. <laughs> yes, I keep teasing you ladies, but oh oh my god, either I don't say anything or I at least say that if something is prepared is coming. I'm I'm also super excited for the things that are happening and I would love to share everything right away, but then where would be the surprise? <laughs> Oh, Aggie says, in the summer, in a beading camp, we were spending the evenings with beading and one of us read out from a book. We loved it. The Zoom event with, with Chenga will be marvelous. Aggie, that sounds like a really, really nice experience. Wow. <laughs> Gunna, for Gunna, it's also going great with the motif. I'm happy. <laughs> okay, I managed to finish this step. All I need to do is to get in position for the next one. And to get in position, I beat one more time through the first bugle bit and also through the outside hole of the jandula. So this was step six. And let's see what is going to happen in step seven. And Esther just joined us. Hi, Esther. Nice to see you. In this step, we are adding the second color of the round 15 seed bead. And actually, this is the little detail what I think made me absolutely love Zuzi's creation. Because as the seed beads are framing the gem duo and then the bugle blade is joined into the gem duo, then it creates a flowy line all around the motif. And 
uh, actually you can use around 15 seed beads also for this little pico so then it looks like if it was a continuous uh, line i really hope that susie will share her original picture so you can see that i changed it for the turquoise uh, delicacy because I needed more turquoise in this motif but yeah you can you can also do this part with the round 15s and then you have this full continuous flower shaped line running all around the motif and I think it makes it super cute <laughs> So, step seven, starting out from the outside hole of the gem dual. I pick up three pieces of the round 15 and then I bead through the delica that is under the fire polished bead that was attached with square stitch to the round 15. And then I pick up three pieces of round 15s and I bead through the outside hole of the next gem dual bead. And this is how I bead all around the motif. Says the 15th elongates the gem duos rather than looking like a diamond shape, so elegant. Yeah, I think they make it look really special. I love this little motif. And I really hope that Susie will make lots of designs for us in the future too. So I'm adding my last two groups of round 15s. And the very last one, picking up three round 15s and then beading through the outside hole of the gem dual. And to get in position for the next step, I bead through the next bugle bead and this is where please be careful with your bugles this is where i managed to crack mine and in step eight i'm adding picos of three beads all around the motif but there will be a little difference so when i'm adding a pico the picots always go between two bugle beads. When I'm adding a picot over a four millimeter fire polished bead, then the three beads will be round 15, Miyuki Delica round 15. But when I'm adding a picot over a gem dual bead, then the picot, my picot will be out of three Miyuki Delica beads. But yeah, as I said, and as Susie wrote, this is where you can also use round 15s. So here you can decide if you would like to have three Miyuki Delicas or three round 15s. And just a moment before I would continue, imagine the, uh, the motifs connected like this, or even like this, if you would like to make an area bracelet. So as you can see, this is perfect also for a bracelet. And in the meanwhile, my big sister and colleague Eva joined us. Hello everyone, good to see you. So I'm over a fire polished bead. So this is where I add the group of round 15, Delica, round 15. I 
carefully bead through the bugle. I make my pico pointy. And then I pick up three Miyuki Delicas and I skip the gem duo and I bead through the bugle on the other side of the gem duo. And Brit Marie is asking, a rhinestone in the middle maybe would work? I think you could attach a rhinestone in the middle. You can attach it, I think, to the around 15 carefully. Or if you would like to use the 6mm rhinestone, if you want even more bling, then you could attach it to the to the delicas maybe. I think it's definitely worth it to try and show us the result if you if you tried it, Brit Marie. Now I'm picking up again round 15. Delica round 15. And we have Eleanor here who says that the 4mm swan works. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I hope that during the weekend you will bead lots and lots of different variations of this cute lotus motif since this is so fast and so quick then you might even have time i hope you will even have time to play with some combinations maybe connecting connecting it to your chitorgar motif to make it into a statement necklace or maybe even a Turo bracelet. Imagine sitting two rows of these little squares on top of each other. So during the weekend, you can play with this. Tomorrow, I will in the morning publish a new article for you in the virtual classroom of the Beading School Academy. So you can learn about the different cities that gave their names for the motifs that I designed for you for the Jewel of the Maharaja box. Uh, we had the Chitorgar motif, we had the Jodhpur beaded bead, soon uh, the Udaipur motif is coming. So all of these are royal cities in India where a Maharaja used to live, or maybe still even lives. There are some palaces which are still occupied by Maharajas in India. And... Yeah, so, so tomorrow I will publish an article, a new article for you. And on Monday, the next motif, the Udaipur, which is this area mandala shaped motifs with bugle beads, gem duos, and three millimeter bicon beads, and with the uh, eight millimeter. Preciosa pearl as the focal. So I will publish the tutorial for this one for you on Monday. And <laughs> Willa says she's ridiculously happy with this. Oh. <laughs> My non-beader sister has a suggestion of adding something between the motifs when connecting for a necklace. No idea what, but it's a good suggestion. <laughs> a peyote bezel, the rivoli or chaton is always a good idea, by the way. That, that always solves a problem when we want to connect something. And if you haven't seen yet, then we have added lots and lots of preciosa pure cabochons into the bead shop. They look so good on this picture. I just love looking at it. 
So these preciosa pure cabochons, they are the ones also that come in your jewel of the Maharaja box without the foil on the back side. So they really like evoke the feeling of real gemstones and they are see-through and they are colorful also from the back. So you can make some double-sided motifs when using them. And until next Tuesday, you can shop this, by the way, we refilled some of the colors which were gone so fast. You can enjoy them with 12% off, or you can even grab a pure Chaton box, which costs 19 euros and 19 cents. And it contains 18 different colors, altogether uh, 72 cabochons. And if you ask why 18, because that's how many we could fit. <laughs> the ladies worked super hard on, <laughs> on putting as many colors into the box as possible. And it was very hard to close after 18. So there are 18 colors <laughs> waiting for you in the box. Besides the ruby, which was in the, in the Maharaja, by the way, my other favorite is this pure amethyst opal. I will have to create something with this. <laughs> and all of you have some suggestions for the connections. So Facebook user friend suggests uh, a row joint. I think that's a great idea for adding more seed beads and make it look like a lace. Then Oh, and is looking forward to the article because she will have a big snowstorm. Take care, Annie. I don't want it. <laughs> Karen was already researching the names. I hope you saw some nice pictures about the palaces and all the beautiful sites in these cities. And... <laughs> Eva should start beading. She loves the see through cabochons. <laughs> Yenny's suggestion is to bead the 315s on the backside too if you make earrings. What a nice idea, Yenny. <laughs> Somebody is asking, is that all the colors? No, but, uh, uh, no, we actually have more than 18 colors available. So some of the, so the boxes differ a little bit from each other, depending on how did the ladies fill, uh, fill them. So it's not always the same set of colors in a box. Cara, fi Cara finds the ruby also beautiful. I think that's the best. Absolutely. <laughs> Susie has to log out. Enjoy the uh, weekend, Susie, and thank you for the link. I'm adding my last group of Miyuki Delica size 11s. And then I beat through the bugle bead. So now I have the picots all around, all around the motif. This is how it looks like. Uh, what I am going to do after the video, that I'm going to attach a sequence of the drop and the round pearl and the milky blue, uh, milky aquamarine fire polished bit to the bottom. And opposite of it, I will add the bow tie ear stud. And when I'm beading one more time all around the motif, then I'm going to skip the middle beads in the groups of three. So I will always bead through the first bead, the third bead, uh, and I will skip the one in the middle to make the picots pointier. So... This was the motive. I hope you enjoyed beating it. Please let me know how did you like it. And if you have any more questions, 
I'm still here so I can answer questions about this or cabochons or whatever comes to your mind. On Tuesday during coffee time with Erica, by the way, I showed you, I shared three of my favorite peyote tricks, so which come also handy when playing with your Maharaja box. For example, I showed you how you can bezel cabochons with peyote without the need of starting a new thread. So if you haven't seen it yet, then uh, it it contains some helpful tricks to make your beading journey uh, even more pleasant. So, Kata is asking if we will have refills on the pure cabochons which are gone at the moment. Actually, they are already ordered. Thanks for your question, Kata. So I hope that uh, we will get them super, uh, super fast. We ordered them already, all the colors which were gone. So... If you don't have more questions, then I just want to say that tomorrow during lunch break of the Beading School Academy, I'm going to, I, I, I will wait for you and I can't wait to spend some time and chat with you. It's always really fun. If you have some questions about any of the motifs that we are beading together, then bring your beadwork, ask your questions. I will be happy to answer and also I really like it that we we share our opinions about different technical solutions and everyone everyone is chipping in and it's and it's great. I can't wait. And thank you everyone who uh, joined No One Has to Be the Loan today. Please make sure to return to beadingschool.com and tell uh, tell other beaders how did you like the workshop, leave a review, write about the motif, write about the workshop, how did you like it? Um, and wishing you lots of lots of fun for the weekend with the article and the new and the new tutorials. Thank you also for all the orders that you have placed. Um, during this week, we really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Uh, sharing news from beading school and see you soon and see your lovely creations in the beading school club bye bye